Hello friends, welcome back to our lecture series on Flight Dynamics. This is section 1, Cruise Flight Performance and lecture 3 which is on drag on finite wing. Let us first understand what is the difference between a finite wing and infinite wing. Infinite wing is nothing but basically an airfoil or any wing which allows flow variation along two coordinate axes only. So it is basically a 2D wing and the flow is allowed to vary along the two axes only and there is no flow variation along the third axis whereas in a real wing the flow basically varies along all three axes x y and z axis so any real wing is basically a finite wing a wing with a finite wing span and any airfoil is basically a 2d wing or an infinite wing now coming to the drags acting on finite wing in our previous video we studied about the drags on an infinite wing so there were three types of drag on an infinite wing which is form drag, skin friction drag as well as wave drag. So in, in addition to all these three drags there is one more drag which acts on an finite wing which is induced drag. Let us try and understand what is induced drag. Now consider an airplane flying with some velocity v. As the airplane is moving forward air particles passes from upper and lower surfaces of the wing. Now consider an airfoil of this wing. As the airplane is moving forward, these air particles moves around the smooth streamline shaped airfoils of the wing. According to a theory, air moving on the upper surface moves at a faster velocity than the one at the lower surface. As a result, we have lower pressure on the upper surface of the wing and higher pressure on the lower surface. Due to this pressure difference, lift is generated on the wing. Now we know air would like to move from higher pressure to lower pressure. So the air below the wing wants to move up and mix with the air at the upper surface of the wing. As a result, the flow near the wing tips tends to curl up, being forced from higher pressure region just underneath the tips to low pressure region on the top. This leads to formation of wingtip vortices. In fact, these are the wingtip vortices which appear like two smoky lines. Now let us have a look at the airplane from the rear as it keeps shedding these trailing edge vortices. Now in between these vortices the flow is reflected downward. This is known as downwash. Hence we have some velocity component in downward direction at the wing. This small velocity component known as downwash is denoted by W. This downwash provides a downward component to free stream velocity. As a result, the effective velocity on the wing is canted down in the vicinity of each airfoil section of the wing. Now, if we had an infinite wing, the lift vector L would have been perpendicular to relative airflow. But on a finite wing, we have some downwash. Since the velocity component is canted downward, so effective angle of attack is actually reduced. So, the angle of attack is no more alpha, but it, it is reduced by alpha i. So effective angle of attack is alpha minus alpha i. Now because effective angle of attack is reduced, so lift vector gets tilted by alpha i. So since the lift vector is no more perpendicular to the airflow, it has a horizontal component as well as a vertical component. Now this horizontal component is equivalent to an additional drag known as induced drag. So induced drag is nothing but this extra component which is which has been produced due to the downwash and downwash came into the picture because of wing tip vortices. So this is the phenomena for downwash. Since in finite wings we have wing tip vortices, this wing tip vortices changes local flow and the effective angle of attack is reduced. Due to the re reduction in angle of attack, the lift vector gets tilted and since lift vector is now tilted, we have a horizontal component of this lift vector. This additional horizontal component is equivalent to an additional drag known as induced drag. So now we know that for a finite wing we have additional drag which is known as induced drag. While in finite wing had form drag and skin friction drag, for a finite wing we have form drag, skin friction drag plus induced drag as well. Now coming back to our question which we asked in our last video. So the question was if we have an airfoil, airfoil is nothing but an infinite wing. So if we had an airfoil Naka 2412 at angle of attack 6 degree if CD and CL values are given as CD is equal to 0 0.0077 and CL is equal to 0 
Now if we make a finite wing out of the same airfoil, will CD and CL values remain same or will they be different? So now uh, as we just understood that effective angle of attack is reduced. So effective angle of attack will no more be 60, it will be some value less, maybe 5 degree or 5 point something. So now we know that for finite wing, the effective angle of attack is reduced. So the effective angle of attack will no more be 6 degree, it will be some value less, maybe 5 degree or so. So CL value will not remain same, it will be less than 0 0.85. So we can say that CL would be less than 0 0.85 for a finite wing. Now coming to CD values, as we know that there is an additional drag known as induced drag which was not there if it were just an airfoil but since now it has become a finite wing there is an additional drag so CD value will increase so CD value would be greater than 0 0.0077 so I hope this clears the picture if you have any questions any doubt please write in the comment box and I will try to answer them uh, in the next video we will do some calculations for induced drag and then we will see what are the total drags acting on the aircraft and then we will see what is drag polar and we will find the equations for drag polar as well so thank you for watching the video keep watching concepts and explain and don't forget to subscribe thank you